Today on an all new Maryland. We're live to air all show long. Mana Mansoor and Richard Krause dish on everything that hit and missed last night at the Oscars. And Lainey Louie joins us live from L.A. after covering the awards for eTalk last night. Then discover easy ways to elevate your locks. Sarah Ampson shows you how to wear the latest trends in hair accessories. Plus, chef's kiss to Crostini. Debbie Travis gets us ready for spring with fabulous ways to entertain Italian style. And Schlanta, Afrin Pristine and Zach Cavas reveal how they plan to host on St. Patrick's Day. It all starts right now. teleprompter you're a cute thing but let me take a good look at you no you're okay no i'm glad you're here hi <laughs> okay we are live today with all the highlights from last night's oscars please welcome style expert mana mansoor and movie critic richard kraus <laughs> Stress on this show, Mara Mansour. <laughs> so Thank we are going to start. Listen, I, I know you both were up really late. I'm just look at you. You're looking at Richard Krause. Well, I have not yet had enough caffeine. I know, but well, we will feed you. Me. Okay, Mana, let's start off with the best dress for women. I love yes. the outfit. By the way, I thought the telecast was great last night. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And Marilyn, it was actually quite hard to pick the best dress. There yeah. were so many amazing looks. However, for my top three, Marilyn, there okay. was a specific criteria that I sure. looked for. Okay. First off was their drama. Did I have a gas moment when they stepped out? A good gas. A good gas, yeah. not like a, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> no, no. Like taking my breath away is really what I was looking yeah. for. Second, and I think very important fit, the tailoring, because a lot of girls, you know, they looked amazing, but then some of the fits were kind of questionable. I agree with you. So I was really paying attention to that. And mm -hmm. last but not least, which is still part of the equation, hair and makeup complementary to the rest of the outfit. So who did you pick? Okay. First and foremost, wow. Cara Delevingne. Oh. She's my number one. Yes. Me too. Gorgeous. Me? Gorgeous. She Look came, at she came oh. around the corner and I went, yes, Exactly. Yes, She's yes. wearing an Ely Saab in this gorgeous uh. crimson color. One shoulder neckline with this beautiful floral, almost like gathered at the shoulder. I love how it had this beautiful oh. ball gown skirt, mm -hmm. but it had a gorgeous slit. So adding a little bit of the sex appeal. It had pockets, as you can see, she's really working it on yeah. the red carpet. And then Stuart Weitzman platform. Beautiful. And then of course the Bulgari jewelry, which she did um, in double around her neck. So yeah. it looked like almost like a choker. Beautiful. And the, the hair and the makeup was just nice and sleek and mm -hmm. clean. So it was almost like an old Hollywood but refined for 2023. I did. That was a good gas. She came around the corner and went, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yes, and the, the champagne carpet, usually it's a red carpet, yeah. but the champagne carpet really nude this off. year, exactly. Although I don't think they're going to go back to the champagne carpet. I don't like, think so. It got it dirty, dirty, didn't it? It looked <laughs> dirty. dirty. Yes. It, it, it either don't wear shoes or make sure those shoes are clean. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Exactly. But it did showcase the dress. Yes. Okay, so also uh, two others. Mindy yes. Kaling. Yes, yeah. okay, so next up, Mindy Kaling. Mm -hmm. She's one of my favorite actresses. And what I love is she's wearing white on the red carpet. It's Vera Wang, beautiful corseting detail. Almost had like a tuxedo effect yeah. on the top yeah. with mm -hmm. a column skirt. This dress actually was done in black, which she wore for the ceremony, but she decided with her team to do wear white on it's the red carpet. On her. And then I love how the hair was half up. Up, half down, kind of like this boho chic. Yeah. So balancing the She's feminine pretty. with the edgy, which I think is very key, that push and play. And she looks phenomenal. White is so great on that skin tone. It's, it's so pretty. And then Jennifer Connelly. Yes, Jennifer Connelly. I didn't know about this dress. I love Jennifer Connelly. I love it. Okay, speaking of tailoring, yeah, Marilyn, okay. this is an example of how to do tailoring perfectly. 
This is a Louis Vuitton. She is the ambassador for the house, has been for about 20 years now. And some of the picks she's done in the past have been questionable, but this one was a definite hit. It is this gorgeous gown with the drop shoulder, mm -hmm. but this beautiful geometric pattern um, kind of neckline. Now it's done in this crepe jersey, but it's Swarovski crystal on the neckline. Ah. And I love how she kept everything simple. No other jewelry really allowed that to show off. Uh -huh. And this is a look that she's gonna look back, you know, 20 years from now and be like, I hit it. I All right. Good job. So now we got to talk about the guides. We don't leave you guys out, okay? We're going to talk yes. about that stress, <laughs> Mana. Tell us. Yes. I love the gentlemen. I always look out for what they wear. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, first off, Harry Chum Jr. Ah. I love this gentleman. He, oh my God, look at him. This is an East meets West, a little homage to his Asian heritage. Oh. It's a white bespoke tuxedo with an asymmetrical lapel. Yeah, he knows it. And I love I how it's- I think I'm kind of channeling him today. For mm -hmm. Yes, you are, yeah, Marilyn. Yeah. I love that. And right. I love how he, again, he played a little homage to his Asian heritage with yes. this look. Yeah. It's by a brand named Adine, which usually does more women's wear, mm -hmm. but they made this custom made for him. Mm -hmm. And then moving on, I wanted to include a classic tuxedo look, but oh, done good. the right way. And this is from Jay Ellis. Ah. So he was, of course, in Top Gun Maverick. Yes. And he's wearing a custom Fendi. I know, oh my gosh, he's so handsome. <laughs> I love him. Um, and I love how the tuxedo just fit him perfectly. Not too tight, just mm. perfect to his, uh, his great stature. And what I love is that it looks like a regular black tuxedo from far away, but when you go close, it has Mona, gorgeous beading on it. I just noticed that now. Right? I just noticed that now. It's got beading on it. That's so it, it is. Cool. So it's, again, doing something yeah. classic, but with an unexpected twist. One That's more guy. That's notice. Right, one more guy. And one more, Lucas Daunt. Mm. He is kind of new on the scene. He was nominated for his Belgian film for international feature, Close. Look how handsome this man is. <laughs> I know. I didn't know much about him, but now I want to know all, all about, about him. All about him, okay. Um, this is a custom Prada, and I love how oh. it, it's playing up with the fashion forward quality. Sure. It has embellishments on the necktie and the shirt, but he brought that down to gloves. Seeing gloves on the red carpet, I love that. Strong shoulder, a great yeah. double-breasted jacket, and a more of a wider leg. So we're yeah. seeing these kind of more fashion forward influences for men on the red carpet, and I love that, because men can play with that fashion too. And I really love that. I can just see you last night. Who's that guy? <laughs> I, I was like, oh my gosh, Me too, me too. Well done, Mona, well done. All <laughs> stuff. Hard to choose. Everyone looks so good. And now, Richard Krause. So let's just talk about the show. Highlights of the show for you. Well, I think we've gone through a period with the Academy Awards where they had no host and they had too many hosts. Yes. And now they've just finally settled on Jimmy Kimmel. I, I thought think that was a great host. choice. And, yeah. you know, Kimmel's an actual host. Yes. That's the thing. He knows how to set the pace mm -hmm. for a show. He's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, when something's not working, though, he knows how to move smooth on. it over and move on. Yeah. Uh, got some good lines off last night. And he, he brought a little bit of the edginess from his late night show to the Oscars, but not too much. I saw him as being kind of a cross between like Bob Hope and Ricky Gervais. Somewhere totally. in the middle yes. there yes. is, is yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. But he knows how to navigate a crowd. Mm -hmm. And then when he was kind of going off, it seemed to me off script, he was reaching out to somebody in the audience. That's yeah. kind of being, you know, aware of your surroundings, yeah, being, not stuck to a script. Yeah, being aware yeah. of the surroundings yeah. and, you know, Everyone was wondering, how are they going to address the slap? Yeah. The slap heard around the world. And it took a little while to get there, yeah. but he did it in kind of subtle ways. And then I love that later on in the show, as things started to run long, and you just knew that, you know, this was going to be a three and a half hour long show, he said, uh, I bet you we were, you know, hoping for a slap right along now. <laughs> up a little bit. So you know, he knows how to read the audience, yeah. and I thought he did a great job. Yeah. Uh, the musical performances last night were extraordinary, I thought, mm -hmm. uh, all around. Um, I love David Byrne, his uh, uh, piece for Everything Everywhere All at Once mm -hmm. was kind of exciting and a little avant-garde yes. for the uh um, the Oscars, but then you get this great, unbelievable song from RRR. Yeah, that is like the night. old Favorite. school Hollywood, amazing action, dancing it's performance, performance event. Yeah, event yes, got us out of their seats, yeah. which yeah. I yeah. love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. to yeah. counter that, next up is Lady Gaga yeah. with yeah. Yeah. with this really intimate performance.
that was shot about, you could count her pores. It was shot so <laughs> close. Uh, but it was a beautiful performance of a beautiful song. And then, of course, Rihanna comes yeah, and... Right. and uh, Clams but, it up. Yeah, but but those... But you those know what I like about Lady Gaga? We did not know that she was going to make it until like 48 hours before mm -hmm. that. Is that something like that? Did yeah, and well, yeah. nobody knew whether she was going to perform or not. Sure. The thing that was crazy about it, though, is you saw her on the red carpet, and she is glammed up. She's doing beautiful. the whole thing. And then somewhere along the way, she yeah, took a way. shower. <laughs> yeah, and... and, and okay, well, there goes a thousand dollars down the tube <laughs> exactly. with the makeup. Exactly. But, and, Jeans, Converse, and rip. I know, I know. And people were know, wondering, so you know, does the Oscars, does it sell tickets, does it, you know, does it create awareness? Uh, in the hour after Lady Gaga sang Hold My Hand, yeah. it went to the top of the Spotify uh, charts. Wow. So it's, yeah. That's the influence. I'm glad yeah. because the reason, the reason why they thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, Richard, uh, the reason why they thought she was not going to make it because she's doing the Joker yeah, movie. Yeah, that's right. She's uh, with, uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. With Joaquin Phoenix, yeah, so she yeah, got yeah. some time off she's to do that. All right. Let's talk about some more wonderful moments. Ki Hui Kwan. Yes. I mean, mm. listen, he it was someone, I interviewed him when Everything Everywhere All at Once came out. Sure. And he hadn't made a movie in 30 years. Mm -hmm. He was short round in the Indiana Jones movie. He was in The Goonies. Goonies. And yeah. then Hollywood walked away from him. Yeah. He couldn't get a gig yeah. uh, in front of the camera. And he cried when he was telling me about how much it means for him to be back. And it was yeah. just such a moving interview. And I thought, wow, I hope that by the time the award season rolls around, we'll remember this crazy little movie called Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. Last night, nominated for 11 awards, won seven of them. And Ki Hui Kwan's speech was just uh, so... Uh, and, and all of them, and Michelle yeah. Yeoh, all of them, just gave these beautiful speeches about creativity, about never giving up, yeah. about... Dream. Dreams. Um, the and, dream. And, you know... I think it's, you know, it's very specific to watch the Oscars mm -hmm. and see people in tuxedos hold up big gold statues yeah. and talk mm -hmm. about how great their lives are. But when you look at the, the those speeches, I saw like this really universal feel. I got this vibe from them. And it's like anyone could be here. Yeah. It's yeah. not just yeah. us that can do this. Sure. Any of us, mm -hmm. if you follow your dream, and it doesn't necessarily have to mean ending up at the Academy Awards. It could mm -hmm. be anywhere. Mm -hmm. anywhere. Um, um, here, uh, is this the first time that in the four, the, uh, uh, best actor and actress in supporting, that three out of the four won for the same movie? I wonder if that stat's going to... Yeah. Have we, done, I, I, we have to look into yeah, that. Yeah, we, we'd have to look that up. But I mean, uh, just uh, listen, that movie was a juggernaut. It, it came, was. It, it was released yeah. around this time last year. Uh -huh. It was never meant to be a big awards movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden, I think, because of its positivity, because of this great message it has about kindness and empathy and everything else, mm -hmm. that it really ignited people's imagination. And I also think because this was a full-on Oscars now. Like, yeah. it's yeah. like three yes. three years after the lockdown. Like, it's like yeah. full-on now. We're yes. doing, it, doing it the way we've always done it. Yeah. The joke's about Ca uh, uh, James Cameron and uh, Tom, <laughs> well, Tom, Tom Cruise not coming. Yeah. And they're the ones that brought us back to the I theater. I heard it's because he didn't want to see Nicole Kidman on the red carpet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, see, I mean, that's the that, joke that, we that made. That is possible, but Jimmy yeah. Kimmel again, you know, yeah. like the, the people that got people back in the theaters yeah. wouldn't come to this I theater. know, I love it. great line. Before I forget, let's talk about standout transmoder really yes. quickly. We have about one and a half. Cam, how much time do we have? <laughs> well, let's get one, right into one it. Half. White was the big yeah. color of yeah. the night, yeah. Marilyn. Yeah. Ethereal white, I'm calling it. So many actresses wore this. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Favorite. Amazing. Look at Emily Blunt right in the second her. panel. She oh. did it in a very simple Does she not Valentina. Look like she's wearing a tube sock though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But then we saw it in a very ethereal way on Michelle Yeoh and yes, Dior, beautiful. and a very vampy way on Halle Berry. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a bride in the spring and summer months, you definitely got some inspiration from mm -hmm, the red carpet mm -hmm, last mm -hmm. night. And then moving on to my second trend, which is probably my favorite statement, shoulders. We saw so much drama on the shoulder and the neckline last night. Kate Blanchett was one of my favorites. She would have made my list uh, if I had maybe a fourth slot. She's wearing a beautiful Louis Vuitton number, and then of course Nicole Kidman and that gorgeous floral applique on the shoulder. I just love how we just played up. This fabulous dress on yes. the right-hand side Thames. was not attempt. Uh, yes. Not good when you're sitting down and other people are trying yes. to watch the show. I, felt well, I think the next person. year they're going to say dresses can only be this high <laughs> <laughs> to sit in the audience. Thank you, Mona. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. All right, Keep Lady Lily is still in L.A. We're going to be checking in with her at the end of the show. Stay with us. Well done. Well done.
Coming up, discover easy ways to elevate your locks. Sarah Ampson shows you how to wear the latest trends in hair accessories. Don't miss it. shows how to style some of the latest hair accessories. Welcome both of you. Okay, take it away. All right, so I've got some of my favorite hair accessories. I know that hair accessories can be a little intimidating if you're not used to working them into your wardrobe. Were you watching the Oscars like a hawk last night? I, I did, but having to be up early for the show, I did have to turn in a little did bit Did you? Early. Of course. I did like how, I know it was put together Kate Blanchett's hair, but it didn't look like it was put together. It was kind of cool. That's my favorite look. I love it. Right? Because yeah. it doesn't have to be perfect. And yeah. like, who has the time? Yeah, And right. the arms to like get Yeah, who's got the arms? Who's yeah. got the arms? Okay. So my first um, favorite hair accessory of the moment are these French hairpins, also known as hair forks. And these are really minimalist, really elegant. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so we Just can see what like they look that. like. Just like that. So we can see what they look like. Yeah. So tell me. All right. Tell, it's very nice. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to do a little French twist with these. Okay. So Chin, I'm going to get you to hold those for me. All right. So what you're going to do is just gather the hair at the nape of the neck. And you're going to twist upwards and then insert the clips. And this is a great alternative to a claw clip. If you find uh -huh. those uncomfortable if you get migraines or headaches at all from hair ties. Yes. So you just sort of twist it in. Again, very Like loose. Lucy. Once you're happy with the shape, yeah. you're going to take the pin okay. with the fork facing away from the head, tuck it in, flip it, push it in. And then push it in, yeah. ah. Just like that. Uh-huh. Oh. You don't have to do a twist, you could do a bun, anything like that. And then you've got like this nice sort of undone French twist. You could tuck these. I kind of think it's pretty left out. Yeah. And that's like gorgeous, it's easy, right? Turn around so you see the front. I can see the front. See, it's like I'm going to the Oscars. It's all right. Exactly. So, so, where, so you just get hair accessories like this. Where do you get these? Yeah. So I got these off of Well.ca. These are by Kristen S. But uh -huh. you can get them anywhere. Okay. Everyone's making them. You can get big ones, small ones, lots of different designs. Mm -hmm. So really pick one that speaks to you. Really pretty. Okay. Yeah. Ponytail. What? A ponytail cuff. Oh, all right. So, you know, it's the end of the week. You haven't washed your hair. It's time <laughs> so, ponytails are my go to for wash day. And this is just a fun way to make them feel a little bit special. So, I'm going to do one sort of at the nape here. You can really put them wherever you oh, like. Oh, I see. So, these come with an elastic attach. Uh huh. I'm just going to tie off her hair. Like what a so. nice accessory that. Right? Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then you just open it and put it. There you go. In like that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I like right? that. That's really nice. Maybe really maybe pretty. Do that. But I know what you're thinking. This what are we thinking? Could use more cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> so a way to take this from day to night, I just like to sort of do the bubble <laughs> pony with these. <laughs> so I tie another one off. Okay. Here. Secure another clip. That's really cute. And then mix I'm going to mix metals. metals. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'm kind of yeah. into that right now. But again, these come in so many different colors. Yeah, yeah. So whatever brings you joy. So we've just upped the drama. And now she's ready. It's sort of like a day to night. All right, love it. Right? Very nice, very nice. All right, now, padded headband. Boy, I've seen that a lot. I've yes, seen that a lot. Yes, we're seeing these everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere. And this could not be easier. So, again, I love a headband because it's a great distraction from unwashed hair. So, basically, you are not letting us really shampoo our hair. That's correct. Okay, yes. very if good. If you want to be greasy like yeah. me. <laughs> these hair Look at this headband. This looks like a so, neck supporter. <laughs> Function okay. and function, okay? That's what we're all about, dual purpose. All right, all so right. This is really beautiful. It's by Toronto <coughs> designer Dorian Hu. Sorry, Dorian. <laughs> Dorian, thank you for the beautiful. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. All right, right? let's take this out. Oh! It's very regal, it's very, very good. Yeah. And again, you don't have to shampoo your hair. I guess that's the theme for me for the day. <laughs> the, the, it should be, do not shampoo your hair, and here's why. All right. Yeah. Sarah Anson, thank you so much. Shin, thank you so much. Beautiful, as always. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. A 
Up next, chef's kiss to Crostini. Debbie Travis shares fabulous ways to entertain Italian stuff. That's up next. talk about do you recall appies appies well, the new trend now is um you know aperitivo is something that you have at the end of the day mm -hmm. cena means dinner in mm -hmm. italy so now they call it apero cena basically it means like i can't be bothered to cook your dinner so yeah. if i went to your house we're doing a cena so it's lots of crostinis and crostini means mm -hmm. like little crust mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. little crust so you can do any toppings you want and the thing is, if you've got guests over, if you don't like the guests, so we've, we've finished, <laughs> off you go. Off you if go. you do like the guests, bring out more crostini. Okay. So simple and cheap. Okay, so the first one is pea and fava bean crostini. Amazing. With edamame. Well, we used edamame because it's quite hard to get fava beans for yeah. another month. Okay. But fava beans will give it a more bitter taste. But this okay. is very similar. Mm -hmm. so, you, so you want this all uh, raw. Don't cook it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to use a, a thingamajiggy, a processor. Whatever. Yeah. See, I don't you go in the kitchen much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever this is. And so you want some peas. You want some broad beans or fava beans. Tinned is fine. Or edanami. Um, a little bit of cheese. Mm -hmm. a little bit what of, kind of cheese? Uh, like a, like uh, a parmesan uh, reggiano? Yeah, you yeah. could. Or you could use any grated yeah, cheese. It doesn't matter. Anything you've got in the fridge. Yeah, I mean, okay. that's the idea, yeah. really. Zap it all up. Mm -hmm. And you want to use... Uh, bread that's a little bit stale, mm -hmm. you know? So maybe it's a baguette you've had from the day before. So sliced up thin, and you want to make it, it doesn't have to be too toasty. Yeah. It can just be, just take off the breadiness of it. Okay. And um, olive oil, of course. Mm -hmm. So you basically, here's one I've done. So you can see it's all nice. Now you don't want it too mushy. You don't want it to look right. like a pesto. Right. Or it'll be runny. Um, so let's get some They don't make it a spread. Don't like make it, it a spread, yeah, because you want it kind of falling all over through. It's not a first date thing. You are? No, not a first date. Or else you're going to have green in your teeth and all over you. Right. But you, that's how they serve it, all over the, you know, because the more drinks you've had, the more little you The can. more you can't aim. Yes, yeah, so I'll make okay. two. I'm not going to let you eat it, because no. it's going to be It's going to be <laughs> green in my teeth <laughs> and all over my... But you know what? It looks really just good. Does it look good? And if it messes up yeah. like that, it doesn't and matter. A little bit of that on there. And, well, actually, I'll just put a little arugula More green. on. That peppery taste. It's very greeny, so yeah. it's perfect for um, just for the freshness of it, really. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And a little bit of beautiful little olive oil. There you go. Olive oil. And there you have it with a beautiful glass of wine. Yeah. Next up. Next up. Yeah. So this, this in a way is a bit like making a salad. Yeah. So if it's out of tomato season, which is now, use the little ones because okay. they're sweeter. Mm -hmm. Olives. Take out the pips, yep. the stones, or get the stony ones. Yeah. So again, you want all your toast. And you can make a big bowl of this and keep it in the fridge. Yeah. And you can have it for lunch the next day. You can, Delicious. You know. mm -hmm. So just stick this as if you were making a salad, all into a bowl. Um, a little bit of vinaigrette. You can use balsamic or normal vinegar. Um, a little bit of chili. Ooh, that'd be good. And then you shred your basil. This yeah. is a nice basil. Oh, someone just said, one of the chefs, someone, uh, a chef that came on the show said, don't cut your basil on the um, cutting board because you can lose all the oils. Put it, put it oh, in yes. there and put it, yeah. just and, tear it. And you yeah. know, cutting boards you shouldn't really wash either because no, yeah. you need to just rub them, just wipe them clean. Good ones. Good ones. We don't have yeah. good ones here. We have, you know, TV ones. Yeah, but that's wood. We wash everything. Oh, oh okay. I don't know, Deb. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's budget cuts. <laughs> Okay, there you go. You Let's mix that together. You've got cardboard. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, so mix all this in. Look how, I mean, that, that says... And it smells Summer is great. coming. Really good. Look at that. So you just put Look that Look at in. that. That is a beauty. There you go. Yes. And this time, if you've got a first oh, date, that's so you've nice. got it all over you and olives mm, in your teeth. There you go. So, I mean... That's great. How much time do we have there? Good, good three minutes, uh, honey. Three minutes. Three minutes. Let's and do you it. can just stick one of those on top. Okay. There. Now I'll this do that one, while you do that. Okay, go ahead. This one this is one. an onion one, and these are sautéing. The key, if you're using onions, is to make sure they're not crispy, because you want these really sweaty, you okay. know, like just very, very soft. This is delicious, and red onions come Ooh. from the south of Italy. Oh, that looks good. Uh, just near Sicily. Yeah. You can do it a little they bit better They get sweeter, than don't they, when they get cooked? They get Those, sweeter, yeah, yeah yes. cam caramelized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There you go. Smells great. My, um, <laughs> my skills in the, in the, Debbie. in the serving skills is I, dreadful. It's okay. It's all right because it's you and me. I, exactly. Exactly. This is what we're having for supper tonight. Yeah. So a little bit of feta, 
Just dribble that on. All right. And a little bit, to say we're out of time, a little bit of time. So a little bit of time, just to give it, because that time goes very, very well with very sweat, much sweaty so. onions. And there we go. Sweaty Debbie milk. Travis, all of her recipes are on Maryland.ca. <laughs> Debbie's hanging around, though, because we got to taste some St. Patty's Day cocktails. I said, I'm not doing this by myself. So stay with us, Debbie Travis. Coming up, Schmanta. Zach Kavass is making St. Patrick's Day cocktails. Don't miss it. Hey, hey, we're back with my friend Debbie Travis is joining us with St. Patty's Day cocktails. Mixologist Zach Kavass, I've not seen you forever. In a while. Friends, take yes. it away. What are well, we doing for St. Patty's Day? Because we're all here. We got a little bit of everything, and I yeah. know everyone's getting excited to host again. Any yeah. Irish people in the audience? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Debbie Travis is not Irish. I'm English. But everybody's Irish on St. Patty's Day. Yes. Good. So we're going to be doing a little bit of everything everywhere all at once here. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with a take on a Caesar, and this is a cross between a Caesar and a bull shot. And it's What's uh, a bull shot? A bull shot is kind of like a Caesar, but it uses beef broth. Oh, okay. Is that interesting? That is interesting. Kind of like that cold soup vibe. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to yeah. be mixing things up. This one I like to shake because I like to make sure everything's integrated and together. Yeah. So you guys can help me out if we want. No, I'm not taste at least, yeah. Yeah, we'll do so that. So no Caesar-like clams. No clams. We're going just cattle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. A lot of cattle in Ireland. <laughs> so we're going to start this one off. I always like to do my alcohol last in case you mess up the cocktail. Also, you can always take a little bit and have a little sip first. Okay, which is good. Feeling so, good, feeling loosen up, loosen up. We've all got right. here a garden cocktail, which is basically vegetable juice, um, all mixed together instead of Clamato. Did you make the, the, the juice? I didn't. Sometimes I do. My mother-in-law got me a juicer, but it always ends up on the kitchen floor. Mm. I don't know. Men. I'm bad with it. Then we're gonna add in our beef broth. Mm. So three quarter cup garden cocktail, quarter cup beef broth. Yeah. Then we're gonna do hoisin sauce. Anyone ever have hoisin yes. sauce? Yes. Fantastic. Mm. If anyone eats pho or pho, that's delicious mm. in that. So this is replacing. That's plummy, right? Plummy. It's kind of plummy, kind of yeah. garlicky, and we're taking place of the Worcestershire. Good. <laughs> so close. I knew you were gonna slap me for that. Say it again. Worcestershire. Now you are saying get people to say after the drink. Yeah, that's right. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Everybody, one, two, three. Worcestershire. Jesus All right. Murphy. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to add in some lime juice. I always like a little bit of citrus in my Caesar. Yes. It brightens it up. Yep. And we've got a celery salt rim. Then we're going to do, usually Caesars have vodka, but uh, Ireland is great whiskey. If anyone yeah. hasn't had Irish whiskey, jump over to Ireland, get yourself a bottle of whiskey, jump home. Yeah. So we're going to add that in. We're just going to give it a quick shake. All right. Make it quick, because you only have four minutes to do two other drinks. All right. We're going to do All this. All right. Dump it in. Look at that. And oh. then we're going to Next one. Next one. So right. now we're going to move along the line. That's fantastic. This All right. This is our green goblin. So we're going to do a third of a cup chopped fennel, or as Debbie taught me, finocchi. 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 Finocchi's the guy with the big looking? nose. Finocchi. Finocchi in Italian. And this is a perfect cocktail if you ever catch yourself in a triangle of sadness and you just want to feel a little bit happier. <laughs> um, this is a great one to brighten things up. So we've got an ounce and a half of our ginger wildflower syrup. Third a cup of fennel and cucumber, and we're gonna do a third a cup of vodka. Okay. Ooh. Let's get that in there. Then just a little lime juice and creme de menthe. Now creme de menthe is one of those things everyone's probably had because it's one of those coloring agents for cocktails, yes. kind of like blue carousel. It's also a student drink, isn't it? It's totally a student, student drink. drink. It's a student it's drink. Cool. Usually I hate using it because it's like so gimmicky, but yeah, it yeah. actually is really good. And it's, it's a terrible hangover. Yeah. Yes. I'm getting swooped. We're doing morning. This is, a, I like to call it a chicken bone muddler. My uncle oh, made it for me. Okay. Muddler. And he made it nice and tall so that I'm not cutting my hands on the right, right, shaker right. there. Right, right, right. muddling Put away. Muddling away. And I'll get a scoop of ice here. Mm -hmm. It has to be green in St. Patrick's. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Okay. Wow. Shake that up. Okay. Shake it till it's too cold to hold. That's so true. Oh, that's a good thing to say. Yeah. 
Uh, you know what? I like oh, that's so you rhymes. know the temperature's right. <laughs> that's right. No, yeah. that's right. And then we got two strainers. We got a fine mesh strainer and a Hawthorne strainer. We're gonna strain right into our Look at that screen. That's like fluorescent green. Not nice. Amazing. And we're gonna garnish yeah. with a little fennel frond. Oh. For my fronds. For my fronds. <laughs> and nice uh, you to be your always fun. give yourself a little tickle. It smells nice. Okay, yeah. Just gonna give that a smack. Way to and go, Dad. Yeah. 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 Way to go. Okay, my friend. Over here. Yeah. One more. This is a really easy one. Okay, all right. You can just build it in a glass. And this is one when it's all nice and quiet at nighttime, quiet on the western front, you can enjoy this uh, at nighttime. I love it, I love it. It is our Oscar And show. this one, actually my three and a half year old son made up, Henry. I was making a cocktail and he just started mixing things on the table. I said, son, what'd you put in here? How old is he? He's three and a half. Yeah. <laughs> What you put in this first? He, you know what? He did our, our ginger syrup, our kvass syrup with galliano and lime juice. Yeah. And I was like, son, it's almost there, but what you need to do is add some whiskey. And <laughs> when you're doing a cocktail, especially that uses scotch, I always recommend doing just a rinse. So you literally take the yeah. glass. Yeah. Drink it. Drink the rest. Oh, and we didn't do that. No. <laughs> they say to rub whiskey on their gums. Yeah. And then you just pour it in the glass. And what that little scotch rinse is gonna do is give it a kiss of scotch, but scotch is so powerful and overwhelming. Yeah, just right, 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 right. Furnish it with a little dehydrated nice. orange. Nice. Dehydrated. Yeah. Great recipes. Good to see you, my friend. Great Good stories. Always such a pleasure. So, honey, All right, right. you yes. want these cool recipes. So interesting at Maryland.ca. And to help you recreate these drinks, thanks to Zach. Thank you, Zach. Thanks, You're everybody. all gonna go home. Y'all gonna go home with a duo of his simple syrup. Yes! Cheers to you, happy St. Patrick's Day. We'll be right back. Up next, Pat from Pristine whips up some delicious St. Patrick's Day eats. Stay tuned. That will be a hit for your party app from Pristine. Thank you. Thank you. Do, you, do, you have, do you have a jersey for everything? I have a jersey for, for every everything. occasion, for <laughs> every team, for every holiday. <laughs> this is fitting today. I know. Right? I love it. I love this. I love this outfit. Thank you. Thank okay, you. so today, what are you making? I, well, I, you know, it's St. Patty's Day. And, you know, the Irish, they love their potatoes. They do. So I'm like, why not make, like, my very famous, or it's become famous, Hasselback potato. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a Hasselback potato? It's been a long, too long. It's, it's one of those like retro things yeah. that have like come back yes. and like I'm very excited. Yeah. And it's so easy. Okay. So we shall start here. Let's so do it. A couple of uh, nice Yukon gold potatoes. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. It's a very simple, easy recipe, but like this is the most crucial part, what we're gonna do. So it's the cutting of the Hasselback, mm -hmm. Marilyn, that is so important. You can't cut through. You can't cut all the way through. We wanna cut like I want to say like three quarters of the way down the potato mm -hmm. and about a half inch along, okay? Mm -hmm. Half inch, even like a third of an inch 
the, along. And that's kind of it, very simple. It's almost gonna look like a potato slinky. Remember yeah, a slinky? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I that's what terrorized my sister with. Yeah, that that's slinky. exactly what we're gonna do. Come so, to the stairs, I would say. Yeah, that's Don't it. Don't worry, the slinky's not gonna come down the stairs. It's coming to get you. That's it. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna go down gonna the stairs, but we'll find yeah. out. But you we'll know what? What I love about this is it really absorbs so many flavors. Totally. Right? Yeah. And I brought some beautiful kind of Irish-themed flavors. Okay. Well, that just went through, See? so we'll leave that. That's a half. All right. Half. The rest is okay. okay. So really, really simple. I'm gonna put it in this nice baking dish here mm -hmm. and sprinkle some salt and pepper. All right. So some salt and pepper. Try to like get it into the little like crevices and the little holes you made. Mm -hmm. Here. All right. You want to open it for me? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. There okay. you go. Yeah. And then a bit of pepper. Okay. Easy, simple, just like that, into your oven, all right? Got it. So we got some, how well, That's hot really is hot, this? your hands must oh, be real. Uh, Look at that. I live, I live, okay, how I long? live in the kitchen. So, no so that was 30 minutes, that okay? Is that is so, hot, be so, careful. Okay, so what, what, no liquids in that or anything? No liquid, no nothing. That is 30 minutes. Now is the fun part here, okay? So oh. now we get the beautiful butter. So now we just are gonna stuff it. So the beautiful butter is gonna give it like a nice kind of beautiful texture, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And like, who doesn't love butter? So as much or as little as you like, I like a lot, Marilyn, I know you do too. Mm -hmm. All right, so the nice butter. And, it melts. and, it and of course, like I brought a beautiful array okay, of some Irish talk, cheeses yeah, can here. We talk, yeah. What is this one? That is all Irish today. That is an Irish cheddar infused with Guinness. So what they do is inject and inoculate the Irish wheels of cheddar with the Guinness so it just runs through. Beautiful. Then this one is infused with Irish whiskey. Where are the cocktails at? Where are those at to go with this cheese? Oh my. So that I just use a very simple, a very straight kind of good old like aged Irish cheddar, all right? And the whole point is just to stuff them, to stuff the cheddar into all these beautiful pieces. Look at the slinky. Do you see what I mean by the slinky Look here? Look at the right. deliciousness. And now, and then by roasting it too, so we had it in the oven for 30 minutes, right? And then we're gonna put it in the oven for another little bit. Whoa. But first, I'm gonna stuff it with some this nice bacon. This is a bacon. meal in itself, but yeah. It is a totally a meal, but it's a great little side mm -hmm. dish mm -hmm. for like any protein you wanna make on St. Patty's Day, yeah. right? So we got some nice bacon, cause who doesn't love bacon and potatoes? So the cheddar, the bacon, now for, uh, for like some nice aromatics, we yes. want some fresh thyme. Ah. That's gonna add a little bit of like woodsy mm -hmm. kind of earthiness to the dish and to the potatoes. And thyme and potatoes are like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, and all then right? a little bit of? Smoked paprika. Okay. So we're really hitting like all of like the flavors. Mm -hmm. You have the crispiness and the saltiness of the bacon, the like umami and the saltiness of the cheddar, the smokiness of the paprika, the earthiness of the fresh thyme, lovely. I need a little bit more cheddar here though, all right? And that's kind of it. We're just stuffing each little layer. And Beautiful. you don't have to stuff each layer, just no. as long as you kind of do it nicely. Fantastic. Right, okay. We're gonna put that one in the oven too. For I'm how just long? gonna take these. For how long? So this is now another like four or five minutes because, until. Because you've been 30 and then four or five minutes. Right, the that, yeah. potatoes are pretty much already yeah. cooked at yeah. this point. Right. But we wanna melt the butter, we wanna melt the cheese, all that fun stuff, okay. all right? By the here way, these go, cheeses everyone. are yeah, really here good. Here we go. Mm. Here we go. The Hasselback. This okay. smells so good. Look at that. Here we go. Okay. The there you potatoes, go. Look right? at this. There we go. I'm so gonna good. use my fingers here. So like now the cheese is like nice Come and on. kind of melty, right? Here, what? don't lose any of this cheese okay. right on top. This is like beautiful stuff. How good does that smell, and right? And because the butter and the cheese, like, and, and the bacon gives you a little bit of, you they're, know. They're all best friends. The potato, the bacon, friends. the cheese. I love it. And the butter. Look at that. Okay. And this is kind of something that you can do to any dish, yeah. right? We have a beautiful, like, New York, uh, a New York aged uh, <laughs> strip loin, some nice asparagus. You can do carrots. You can switch That's this right. out for a piece of fish, yep. a piece of chicken, but really kind of dish. anything you want. Afro Pristine, you're a rock star. Right? right? A delicious so addition to your St. Patty's Day job. Thank you, Afro. For the rest of these on Maryland Dante, we'll be right back. Delish. Up next, Lady Louie joins us live from L.A. after covering the awards for E-Talk last night.
That's up next. Welcome back. Joining us live from L.A. with all the behind-the-scenes gossip from last night's Oscars is e Talk senior correspondent and my friend, Lena Lewis. <laughs> Okay, so I have to say bravo to eTalk for doing such a great job. And I know there's so much Thank behind Thank you. We had a lot of fun. I, it looked like it, and that, because you guys were having a lot of fun, look, we were having a lot of fun. So you and Trace were up in the balcony. You know, there's people, oh, there's that star and that star, but you saw things that happen up there. What did you see? Like a little, was there a, an argument with anybody? A little PDA? What happened? <laughs> Well, not an argument. I'm okay. happy to say that okay. there were no arguments or any assaults this year at the Oscars. <laughs> um, however, we did see some physical displays of affection. And that's the best thing about being on the balcony is you're seeing makeup touch-ups, you're seeing people gossiping. Sure. And for us, we saw Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban were really tactile last night. There was a lot of face touching, neck touching, tongue touching, <laughs> all that. Um, and it, in front of the cameras, there are photos of them kissing very intimately. And it, it kind of made me think, oh, thank God Tom Cruise is, isn't here, but we were expecting him. So 90 minutes before the show started, word broke that Tom Cruise was not coming to the Oscars. He was fully expected to, but he stayed back at work. Nicole was a presenter. So, you know, my gossipy mind was like, did Tom Cruise not want to come because he didn't want to see Nicole Kidman, PDA, Keith Urban on the red carpet? <laughs> I'm sure that's not the reason, yeah. but they haven't been on the same red carpet together in years. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and then, you know, and I, I, his film, Maverick, uh, Top Gun Maverick, brought everybody back to the theaters. And as Kimmel mentioned last night, you know, two of the main, you know, directors, Cameron and, and uh, Tom Cruise, they, they weren't there last night, which is kind of disappointing. But then again, we forget there are, the, there are relationship issues, too, from the past. We just don't want to face them. Yeah, there are. I mean, it, all, like we were also, a lot of people were also watching, and when you're talking about past relationships, yeah. don't forget, Vanessa Hudgens was hosting one of the pre-shows, yes. Austin Butler, as you just said. And then, hey, right? Yeah. So, and also, they were together for 10 years, and Vanessa was the one who manifested the Elvis role for Austin. Mm -hmm. um, and somehow their people made sure that Austin didn't get interviewed by Vanessa Hudgens and was interviewed by okay. Ashley Graham instead. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you, you gotta be careful. Can I ask you mm -hmm. two questions that are really off script, but I don't care? Um, um, I want to ask you about yes, Hugh Grant. Yes, let's go what, off script, Marilyn. Yeah, we always do anyway. Hugh Grant, what's his attitude problem? He got an attitude problem. He was talking to Ashley Graham on another red carpet, and he was just not, uh, asked nine questions, didn't answer any of them. Is he always like that? Yes. Um, Hugh Grant is famously crusty <laughs> and often in a bad mood and impatient. Yeah. And sometimes that's funny and it makes for comedy, um, you know, in certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. But it certainly isn't funny if you're on the receiving end and you're a, a reporter and you're just mm -hmm. trying to do your job. Got it. Got it. She so handled it. he was yeah. not very pleasant. No. Yeah. And she handled well because she said, well, okay. Anyway, uh, the other thing I was going to mention, you know, when everybody tells you you're going to win an award and you don't, and you're in the f first row, that must have been very tough. That's when you really have to bring on your act acting chops, Angela Bassett. I felt terrible for her. I was happy for Jamie Lee, but I don't know. Like, I mean, who, who votes and why? What did you think of that moment? For Angela Bassett, I thought it was a real moment. Um, I think it's okay to want to win. Yep. And if it's okay to want to win, then I also think it's okay to be disappointed about mm -hmm. not winning. So let me contrast Angela Bassett with Michelle Yeoh, who did win. Mm -hmm. But when they were announcing Michelle Yeoh's category, did you see she reached over and she held Jamie Lee Curtis's hand so tight? Oh. It means that she was like, oh, I hope it's me, I hope it's me. And we were all hoping for Michelle Yeoh, and it worked out. Yeah. But imagine if she had lost to Kate Blanchett you know, plastering a fake smile on her mm. face wouldn't yeah. have been real. Really? And I think yeah. what Angela Bassett gave us was a very real moment. Who doesn't want to win an Oscar? And so if you don't win, You're sad. I don't know, I think it's totally normal to be yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm bummed out. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you too on that one. Okay, Sarah Polly, big win for Sarah Polly. <laughs>
We got to yes. talk about Sarah. Tell us about that. So Sarah Polly, Sarah Polly winning the best adapted screenplay. Um, here's what that win means. It means that the industry especially the writers in the uh, in Hollywood yep. and the people who vote for the Oscars have such high respect for Sarah Polly and she gets prestigious actors to work in her films Frances McDormand yes. I don't know how many Oscars she's won lots right. I'm sitting in front of may maybe some of them yes um, and all of these all of these fr like uh, very, very acclaimed people want to work with her because they respect her work. Uh, I ran into her at the Canadian Consulate Party, hosted by Tyrone, actually, yep. on Thursday. Yep. And we had a moment, and I was like, congratulations. And she was like, thanks. She was really enjoying this ride. She was hitting up parties. Not too many parties, but she was really... I don't know, kind of riding the flow of yeah. campaign season and award season and basking in this moment. So like to the, see her calm it, like end her award season yeah. with that trophy was amazing. We love you, Lainey. Thank you for being with us today. Come on, Sarah, I miss you. I love, I love you too, thank you. All right, darling, that's our show for today. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Lainey Louie.